it was Hey guys, it's Sadie and Sean have no friends. It's a brand new episode and we have to start off by thanking our sponsors. Uh, we have some wonderful local businesses like Christiana Salon Spa. Go to ChristianaSalonSpa.com and uh, get your hair done, nails, massage, facial. Listen, school has started again. If you're a teacher, you deserve to get in there and get you a good squeezy massage. Say, squeeze the shit out of me. That's like I want to do to these point. kids. No, no. Oh, no. okay. Well, don't do that, I guess. But if you feel like you do want to go in, I like it when I get massaged with rocks. I they have hot stones there. Did you know that? I you saw the hot, hot stones, stones there when I was there. I saw them. They didn't put them on me, but I saw them sitting there. Okay. Okay. So thank you to them. Mention the podcast for 10% off when you make your appointment to go in. Treat yourself. Okay, Sean. Give me the list options. Today. Oh, yeah. I got two different lists that we could pick from today. We haven't okay. done a list, in, a list in a little while. Um, the first one is what can't you wrap your head around no matter how many times it's explained to you, such as folding a fitted sheet is on that list. And okay. the other... The other list is titled, OK, Millennial, 15 old people things that millennials agree with. So in other words, things that old people say that young people agree with, too. Oh, God, that's a hard one. That one's a better list. I'll be honest. OK, then let's go with that one, then. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, there's actually 15 things on here. I'm going to skip through the first five. So we'll just we'll start at number 10. There should okay. be zero work-related texting, especially during non-work hours. All work communication should be through a work email account. I That is not possible anymore, I believe. I just don't think it is. I think you got to reach out to it. it. You're never off. You're never turned off because of technology. And this is something that sucks for people who are married to workaholics like myself, like Shannon. You are probably always on your phone. Yeah, right? we made a pact. We made a pact. Like, I'll leave my phone off of silent. So in, in case my grandpa called me and he really needed me or something like that. But after dinner, we have dinner usually at like seven o'clock. After dinner, um, we're off our phones. Like phones are phones are done That's unless it? it's an emergency. So I'll again I'll leave it off of silent so that way if something important is happening and it's not a ding if your phone texts or if you if uh, if a phone call comes through and you look at it to see what's going on, but to be on your phone scrolling aimlessly through TikTok yeah. or or even looking at emails like it's off limits and it's actually been really good for us I think and so uh, I like that one in the sense that you would have to go into an email account to see work related stuff and that's off limits and so uh yeah I, I don't so think that there, your do boss you have do you have be, any anxiety if your boss does email you do you look at it or are you like no this is I not actually, email time I told him I told him that this whole thing was going on and and he was cool with it. He's like, that's good. I think I think more oh. bosses should embrace that. Like you need to be able to decompress and you need to be able to escape from work. So I think that's a perfect one. Like if it's a work related thing, send an email. And if you're an employee, you shouldn't be checking your email at 830 at night. And so therefore, don't text me with work stuff at 830. Send it in an email. And when I go back to email time, I'll get it. I don't think I can anxiety wise see like an an email and, uh, you know, from a boss or from something like that and just completely shut down. I don't know. It's like this, it's, it's an addiction and it's really bad. Um, I don't so even look at it. That's the thing. Too. I don't, I, and I, I think and you don't there, think like, Oh my God, what if right now, like something horrible is happening and I'm not, what do I do? Yeah. But they're not going to send it in an email. If for instance, in, in my industry, I work in radio, the worst thing that can possibly happen well, there's two. There could be some sort of like emergency going on in our community where the community needs to know about it and somebody needs to get on the air. That would right. be text worthy. Somebody would text me and my phone would ring and I would see it. It wouldn't be lost in an email or the radio station just goes off the air and somebody needs to fix it and get it back on the air, which also would be text worthy. They actually have technology now where the radio station recognizes when it's off the air itself and it and it calls you a robot calls you and it says your radio station is off the air. Somebody fix it. And it's like two Those in the, the morning. Worst. Yeah, it's always a two in the morning. Yeah, I've heard of these. I was never at a place where I had to be in charge of a station. Thank God. Cause like uh everyone I talked to who was in charge of a station, it yeah, they're like it's in the middle of the night. And isn't it if it 
rings a certain amount of times and you don't pick it up, it goes straight to corporate or something like well, that. Well, yeah, it, it works its way up a list. And so, so if you, you don't answer, yeah, then, then your boss gets the call and they're pissed because they're getting woke up at 3 a.m. Or if then they don't answer, yeah, then the big guy gets it and then shit rolls downhill. And it, it's not pretty on those. It wasn't pretty on those days when it went up four chains and some dude in New York City is getting a call about a, a little old station in Cheyenne, Wyoming going off the air at 3 a.m. That's not that's not a good email to get. That's not a good email to get. I You're will right. tell you this, though, like just along those same lines, it's been kind of refreshing and nice because I'm not the boss anymore. When I left iHeartRadio, where we worked together, I was yeah. I was the boss of four radio stations. I was in charge of them. And so four different radio stations could call me at any point in the day, any holiday. It didn't matter. And it happened often, unfortunately. And now there's a guy who's ahead of me and he probably makes a lot more money than me. But you know what? I don't get phone calls at 3.30 in the morning anymore, ever. Haven't done it for two years and it's refreshing. I have to tell you that I have always enjoyed not being in charge of anybody. And I remember the gentleman that I worked with for years and years, he was in charge and then they just bumped him down to being an on-air talent. And he took that so hard. He took it so hard. And I said, listen to me. This this is not this is an opportunity now for you to now just worry about what you're putting out there. You don't have to worry that somebody didn't do their job and now it's your job to change their job. Now you can 100 percent focus on doing a good job at what you are supposed to be doing. And and like a couple of years went by and he's like, oh, thank God that happened. And that's what you're saying is once you're not in charge of people, business isn't too bad. It's not that hard. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm still like the the second in line. And so I'm surprised he probably will watch this podcast and be like, yeah, I can't believe I haven't changed that phone number over to you for when the station goes <laughs> off the air. So I probably just screwed myself because I'm not fully out of the woods is what I'm yeah. getting at. Where Scott, your partner, who you were just talking about, he got fully out of the woods. He was He's out of the he woods. Was not, he was not in charge of anything. I still I'm still the assistant to the guy in charge. So I'm still you're still, still the on woods. the hook. Still in the woods. All right. Uh, number nine on the list of things that old people say and young people agree with. Tips should be for sit-down meals in restaurants <gasps> only. I know. And I'm not strong enough to say no. I just, I went through Starbucks and, you know, they're like, it's going to ask you a question. And we all know what the That's question fair. is. That's and fair, so though. Like, I See, see I, I agree the tipping culture has gotten out of control, but. There are certain places that are not sit down restaurants, Starbucks and any sort of coffee shop with a drive through being one of them where I'm OK with tipping. I what? Then how is that different than going to a McDonald's and then saying, here you go, asking a question? Well, you make a good point with that. I don't know. I, I feel like a, making a coffee to me is like making a margarita. And you would tip your bartender you for making a margarita. Okay. So why wouldn't I tip my barista for making me a latte? And I, 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 I don't know. I see. You don't it's a tip, circle. You don't tip Jimmy Bob for making your Big Mac. You just don't. Sadly for Jimmy Bob, that's bullshit that he got jumped over and it went straight to a punk ass barista. I Jimmy love Bob so. should have become a barista. Bad career choices. Okay, go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. Uh, you know, who, uh, who asked for a tip the other night and I was torn. Sorry. Cause I know you wanted to move on, but I now was what? torn on this one. It, we went to an ice cream shop and it's like a, it's not like Dairy Queen. It's like a full on like craft ice cream shop. And so, so they, they scoop, like do it on the board. Yeah, they, and, well, yeah. They, yeah, they scoop it out and they get it all ready for you. And then they hand it to you and it asks for a tip. And like, I don't know. I feel like I've softened because I felt like that was tip worthy. And I gave 20% for that, which is like a full restaurant tip. But then I walked away uh, from a $70 ice cream bill yeah. feeling kind of guilty. Cause you, cause you like, did, yeah. Like, cause it was so much money for ice cream. Like I could have, I could have bought the whole ice cream section at Safeway for $70. Instead, we all got one ice cream cone. See, I think this goes further than the tipping thing. We are at the age where we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Since when was a happy meal six ninety nine? when it used to be 99 cents and the toys were better quality. And I mean, I, it's just insane now. Like, it used to be if you had five bucks, you were set. You had dinner, you had lunch, and you had Bountiful. And now it's like $5 will get you nothing anymore, anywhere. It's insane. 
They're all bringing the $5 meals back, though. McDonald's has one now. Wendy started it. Now McDonald's has one. And there was another place. And maybe it was even, t- I think it might have been Taco Bell that was teasing one the other day. So I, I feel like Those sometimes teases. things have to get really out of control for them to come back and get reeled back into where they were supposed to be. And I think we're yeah. starting to get back to that reel back period, which is good news. We can all get fat on McDonald's and Taco Bell and Burger King for cheap again, which is nice. Um Hey, you hate restaurants King. Don't should offer like an like it. <laughs> you bastard. Burger King. <laughs> it, the other day I had a choice. It was either go to Burger King because there's no line. I was in a hurry. And or I, eat I your had, own like, farts. I had I had 10 minutes. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. I mean, I couldn't even fart because I haven't e- eaten. I was starving. It was go to Burger King. There's no one in line. But I don't have time to wait in line at McDonald's or Wendy's, which are right there. And I chose not to eat. Number eight. Restaurants should offer an actual menu, not a QR code. Oh, I hate that. I do think that that is a weird thing. I don't like it when you go to a restaurant and they're like, have you scanned the QR code? I do think that's annoying. Um, but then on the flip side, have you ever been to a restaurant and they hand you a menu and it's sticky and it feels sticky and you're like, oh, shit, if this is where we're starting, which is the menus where they got a weird ass sticky film that I can't even imagine what the kitchen in the back is looking like, you know, uh, you make a good point. I think okay. that the QR codes were like a COVID thing. Regular menus Me are starting too. to come back. I haven't seen too many QR codes. Everybody needs to calm down. Number seven. I just went somewhere over the weekend. QR code. You had to scan it. And I'm like, they didn't even have a menu shit. option. It they was QR didn't even have only. A menu option. No. And I said, what if I have a Motorola Razor? Does that mean nothing? And they, no one cared. They would have said, we don't want your business. You don't have enough money to <laughs> They're eat like, here. So you're poor? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Number seven, grocery stores are too much work from scrolling through an app to clip all the sales to scanning and bagging your own purchases. We're so lame. It used to be I, like I you disagree. have to kill chickens and shit. I think that's true. Good point there too. But I think grocery stores have gotten easier. I avoided it and avoided it and avoided it. And I started here recently ordering my groceries on an app and it's so easy. Like, you are Shannon never going to go a into it. A... No, why would I? I it doesn't even cost. I they do it, it for free. I go through I and it. I pick all the things I don't have to, because here's the thing. I'm not good at like navigating a grocery store. So I find myself walking from one end to the other end, to the other end, to the back and back. And back. like some people know, and they can get it all. I can't. So it takes me forever. But on the app, I just type in green peppers, green peppers pop up. I put them yeah. in my cart. I type in milk. It, I do it in five minutes. I pick it up in an hour and it's done. It's so See, much. I, I even am lazier. I have it go get delivered to the house and then they just leave it on your front porch. And it's just, it's so great. I love it. I remember when I first learned of said technology, it wasn't available in our area yet. And I was like, this can't be real. They, they go get what you want and they bring it to you. And sure as shit, look at me now. I don't even go to the store hardly ever unless it's to get like one thing. Uh, But for the most part, the weekly groceries, they come in delivery. It's nice. The one thing I will say about this is if you do go to the store, the grocery yeah. picker outers, the ones that are getting the stuff for the delivery, they're 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 assholes. They're like in a hurry. I think they get paid more if they sh- oh. it's like shop till you drop. And if you get if you get Sadie's groceries all bagged up and to deliver to her faster, you get a bonus or something. And they are they don't no one gets in their way. Are you talking about? What store you get? What service are you using? Because I use two different services. I use King one... Supers. Oh, you do? I don't use that. Oh, so it? What is it? Instacart? No. Is that what it's called? King Supers. It's called Just King, King Supers. Supers. They do it themselves. Okay. Instacart well, we'll do it anywhere you want. Walmart does it, and uh, and Target does it through an app called Shipped. And let me tell you, it's so different because at Walmart they're like, "Bitch, we don't have sour cream," and you don't even find out till you. You go to pick it up. They're like, here are the things we didn't have. Now, if you go through the shipped app, like if you're shopping at Target or something like that, they are, they're like, mm, what ply of toilet paper would you like? Because I know you asked for two ply, but there's a sale on three ply. And you're like, well, oh, that sounds complicated. No, thank you. And, and why they would text anybody you. buy two ply? They text you. So it's oh. very nice, actually. Shipped. Good to know. All right. Um, number six, people need to stop speeding through neighborhoods. This one is the kind of a given, like maybe it's because we're parents, but yeah, no shit. Sherlock, you shouldn't speed through a neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Shouldn't well, we can move on from that zones. one. Yeah. I mean, good. 
Yeah, we got it. Uh, number five, not everything needs to be recorded, photographed, and posted online. I've gotten more and more into this mindset yeah. here recently. I, I really struggle with, I work in an industry where it's expected that you have a presence on social media. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just, I struggle with, I envy my mom because I started her social media and she only wanted Facebook and she only wanted it because of marketplace. So she had me make her one and uh, people try to friend her and she really doesn't, she only does marketplace and that's it. And I feel like I would eventually maybe get to a place where, yeah, I'm only using it to watch videos of people falling down or to buy used shit. I mean, that's what it may end up being. I mean, at this point in your life, that's really all it needs to be. You don't, you no longer have a corporate somebody breathing yeah, down your neck care. saying you need a, a social media presence. So I know. And I really don't, don't do to. that much anymore unless it's for this podcast. Um, okay. What's next? What's okay, next? You, four. You shouldn't have to download an app for everything. It's annoying. I'm, number three, people shouldn't listen to music or have videos and calls played on their phones in public without headphones on. Yeah, that's annoying. Why would you do that? That's annoying to everyone around people you. People do it in the airport a lot. I, I don't know if they don't have headphones or what, but they, they'll sit there where they're waiting to get on their airplane and they'll watch YouTube videos without headphones and it's blaring. But I have headphones. And so it doesn't whatever. bother you. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next. Two, social media was better off when it only showed you content from friends and followed pages, not shit you didn't sign up for. I disagree fully and wholeheartedly. My life started when it started with those algorithms. And I know they say that's going to be the end of the world because they're going to figure us out so well. But I love that this little thing knows exactly what I want to see. If I'm feeling like I want to read more about J-Lo and what's going on, it just feels it. It's like it knows how to satisfy me. Hey, let's break in right there before you get to number one and thank our sponsors, Garage Door Service and Sales. Give Patrice a call and uh, whether you need something fixed or you want a brand new garage door, garagedoorserviceandsales.com. Thank you to them for being a show sponsor. We appreciate it very, very much. Sean. That is very nice of them. Number one on the list is... yeah. Uh, garage doors that no, I'm just kidding. I, oh, I'm like, are you stupid serious? about garage doors? <laughs> I don't have anything <laughs> have to edit the shit uh, out of this. Number one is kind of a petty, stupid ass thing, though. It's not anything that you would guess, and it's nothing like anything else on the list. Like, most of this has to do with like everyday life sort of stuff. And the number one thing on the list is just like out of the blue, it's okay. new car headlights are too bright. <laughs> okay. I think when you hit that, then it's like, wait a second. First of all, why is anyone driving at night? That's the first problem that you're yes. running into. I don't even, I can't even tell you when I last saw a headlight. Are they bright now? I'll tell you this. I was following behind a Jeep the other night and I don't know why, but it had like a floodlight and I'm talking bright as the sun floodlight on the back of it on a bumper. And I got behind it. And I'm like, bro, this has to be illegal because I cannot see shit. <laughs> it's, it was blinding me. Wow. And I don't know what the purpose of that would have been, but it was on the back and it was on and it was really bright. Okay. Good stories at the end of your list. Yeah, that's, Should I... that's funny, huh? That's incredibly funny. I'm glad you survived through that. Now let's jump right into, because I don't want to run out of time, but because it is Thursday, we're going to be doing If You're Asking Us, which is a new segment. And it's uh, brought to you by our friends at Big Stuff Storage. They store boats and they store RVs and they do not mess around. I don't know what that means. I have no copy for them, but uh, it's indoor and outdoor, and it's hard to find spots around around these places to be storing stuff on the inside and the outside. Listen to me just weave this web, and uh, they do it. BigStuffStorage.com or call 970-310-8383. Here is the issue for today, and I find this to be a little bit weird one, a weird one. It says, uh, my boyfriend and I are going through a rough patch right now, Sean. Uh Uh-oh. My parents hate him and they don't want him around at all. I have another social media account that's not connected to me in any way. This is not me. I do have that, but it's not me. Um, And I have been messaging him as a concerned stranger. What the fuck does this mean? He poured his heart out to me and it's touching. I don't think I could ever tell him this because I don't know how he would react. 
I'm trying to help him heal from us not talking in a while. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. Me and my boyfriend are going through a rough patch. My parents hate him and don't want him around. I have a third account not connected to me in any way. What does that mean? Does third account mean a third person? I thought it just meant like an account. I don't know what that is. I'm thinking of another one. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> okay, let's try this one. Um, it says, my future sister-in-law is having a bridal shower this upcoming weekend, and my wife wasn't invited. Ooh. But my sister and my cousin, they were. We got married last year, and the future sister-in-law was invited to my wife's bridal shower. We're speculating that it's because we just had a baby, an eight-week-old baby, and she wasn't invited. But I would have thought that there would be at least a courtesy invite to my wife. Way, way, way. I also think that the future sister-in-law's friends are planning. I hate this one, too. Hang on, Sean. I may have some Nice of you to vet these. I bet everybody's enjoying this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cut this shit out, honey. Hang on. coming from a man or no a woman it said i knew this man for about three years and he goes out of town and he doesn't pick up the phone ooh, ooh. he says he's on a job and that i don't really but i don't really think he's working sean are you listening right now hello okay but i don't think it's he's working every time he comes back to me he says he wants to have sex and he wants to talk about having a baby. I never once. What the fuck? Do people not know how to write? Been invited into his house. Just can stand outside and talk in the car. Where are they doing it at? <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. Is Because the title is, is my boyfriend trying to abduct me? I knew this man for about three years. He goes out of town, doesn't pick up the phone and says he's on a job, but I don't think he's really working. Every time he comes back and sees me, he says he wants to do it and talks about having a baby. I never once have been invited into his house. Well, geez, you dumbass. I could stop there and tell you you're an idiot. Um, we can just sit outside and talk in the car. Then when he gets ready to leave town, he doesn't call me. Is he hiding something? Oh my God, this could not be for real. I think he might be lying to me about his age. Wow, that's the concern. Also, he might be with somebody. I've asked him to meet my family. <laughs> he makes excuses. This is Sean, dumb. <laughs> this is the dumbest piece. What advice are we supposed to give her? You dumbass. I don't even know what the hell has just happened. <laughs> explain to you i don't understand why she asked is my boyfriend trying to abduct me she knew a man for three years he goes out of town he doesn't pick up the phone yes you he's a liar and what are you talking about should i pick another one yes that one's God that dang one's shit. it yes <laughs> this <laughs> This dude says, I'm, I want to see why this woman, Abby, who I've been dating for a couple of weeks, has started to ghost me. I thought we were getting along great. You know, we had a couple of nice dates. We met online, and now she's MIA. And that's it? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good dude. one. Never mind. I thought it was going to have more meat to it. It, it did He's say telling the two sentences that there wasn't going to be meat to that. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Here's one. Here's one. <laughs> We're going to get one of these right. I think I'm going to leave all these in. I'm not even going to edit these out. Um, this one says, I am a 25 year old female and I recently got my nipples pierced. 
my boyfriend has a friend. So her boyfriend has a guy friend and we're very close. We're all college friends and I consider him very trustworthy. And yesterday he was at our apartment. And when I came back, uh, I found my boyfriend and his friend in the living room. And when my boyfriend noticed my nipple piercings, because I just got out to get that one. Were the boobies just hanging out? <laughs> well, where the fuck did the nipple piercings come from? Uh, she went out to get nipple piercings. She came back. Her boyfriend, his friend were there. And uh, I don't know. I guess she... She says her nipples were out. Why are your nipples out when you walk into my house? Am I unable to give advice anymore? Because I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, maybe she thought it was only going to be her boyfriend and she had just gotten him pierced. So she came in, she, she took her shirt off when she came in the door to surprise him and be like, hey, look at what I just did and didn't know his friend was there. Okay, now listen, she continues by saying... She gets in a conversation. She says, yeah, look, guys, I got my nipples pierced. And the boyfriend kind of doesn't seem really into it. But the friend says, hey, can I see him? It sounds like he already saw him. Maybe he, well, said, he saw I? through the I think he saw through the. Shirt. Oh, OK. And so, well, this upset the boyfriend. And so now the boyfriend got mad because she said, do you want to see him? And no, he said, do you want to see him? My boyfriend didn't reply, but his friend said, yes. So I lifted <laughs> my shirt <laughs> and my boyfriend, uh -huh. my boyfriend covered my friend's eyes and got up and said, don't do that. His friend apologized, but my boyfriend was very mad at both of us. And then now there's a big vibe and everything is turned and everybody's mad because they saw my nipples. Sean, what excuse would you give to anonymous? Are they an asshole for showing him off? I think that that should be something that's pre-talked about, probably, just to make sure everybody's feelings are protected. Like, hey, Bobby Bobby really wanted to see your nipples, and maybe you should ask if I'm comfortable with it before you just show them. And you know Bobby. He'll always want to see them. Yeah, of course Come Bobby on. wants to see them. So <laughs> maybe you should check with me before you show Bobby your boobies and make sure that I'm comfortable with it, because I could see how that would be a upsetting situation i i understand why boyfriend would be upset that that bobby got to see those things well she's saying now because she let bobby the friend see the boobies the boyfriend has iced her out and is not talking to her and is not talking to bobby and uh you're saying that he has a right and she was an asshole to flash the friend i agree I learned something new every day, Sean. Finally, we found one. And that was today's, if you're asking us. If you're you not going to answer? You're not going to give your advice on this? You think that the boyfriend is in the wrong for being mad? Hang on. I'm going to think about this really hard so I give a really good answer. And I guess it should be discussed if you show your boobs. That's kind of a weird. That's, that's a, a conversation weird, to the gospel weird conversation. Night. Do you care if I show your friends my boobies? Yeah, but listen, in the context of the way she was saying it, they were all kind of talking. She was saying they were asking her questions. At one point, he said, did it hurt? I told him, surprisingly, it didn't hurt. And so she said, you want to take a look? I mean, I guess he did in turn then see the entire boob. But if she said started, she started like sticking his face in between them, and then then maybe somebody should be mad. I don't know. I feel like Why, we would Ryan there. be mad if you flash some random dude. I think that Ryan would be sneaky mad. I would. I, I think I would do something. This would be me, and then he would later be like, you know, I didn't like that, and I'd be like, what? I don't know why. I think that it doesn't bother me at all. I think nudity is not that big of a deal. Um, I, it's not like I see a lot of wieners. It's not like this kind of a chick <laughs> you thing. Do. You've you know? been watching that stupid show. Oh! <laughs> oh my God. Not to go back. It's on HBO max and it's called, uh, what is it? Naked ambition. It's just amazing. Um, but I don't know. I don't think it, I guess she is an asshole. Uh, these people aren't going to want to sponsor us. Anymore. So like do you go around and flash people then? Is that something you do? Because it sounds like you're all right with this whole situation, which is I would have to believe the minority of most people would not be all right with it. Most, well, first of all, most women don't 
wouldn't be comfortable just flashing their boobs. I don't think. And Fair. most most boyfriends slash husbands wouldn't be comfortable with their woman just doing it, especially to like best friends. But she says she has a lot of piercings. They they're all really best friends. You know, it's kind of like a they're all best friends. So he's not closer. It sounds like to this other guy than she is. They're all the same. And he just casually said, wow, that's crazy. You got your nipples pierced. Can I see him? And she said, yeah, sure. She wasn't like, check out my boobs in a sexy way. She was like, look at this piece of fat. And now there's a ring on it. Yeah, Can that's you believe most, how weird that that's, is? That's the most woman thing I've ever heard in my life. That's not how dudes, dudes look at boobs in a sexual way every single time, unless really? they're a baby and they're hungry. That's the only time that a dude ever looks at a pair of boobs in a non-sexual way. Every other time, pierced, unpierced, just got a boob job. Doesn't matter. Like if boobs, if you show your boobs to a dude, he instantly thinks, hmm, she wants to do me. No, you're over. That is how dudes think. Dudes <laughs> out there who are listening to this podcast right now, if you think differently than that, we will leave you anonymous if you'd like to be, but please tell yes. me that I'm wrong. Please tell me I'm wrong because I think I don't think there's a dude out there. I don't think there's a single one that will disagree with what I just said. That will automatically assume she wants to sleep with me. If you're showing me your boobs, you probably. Yeah, but what if you're just me. a really open and free person? That's a weird situation. I don't. I see mean, that we all know often. those friend groups where they're so open, and you're like. Yeah, they there's probably all do each action. other. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, some pineapple action. I don't but, think that they ever just like, hey, check it, look at these bad boys. And I don't know. Girls play are with different. them if you want to. Girls are different. And I've had friends through the years who have had, you know, like plastic surgery done and they show it off. They show it around. They show it off. It's not a big deal. And it's if one Ryan, thing if they show it to a female friend. I understand. But if I'm at a party and one of our really good mutual friends got a killer boob job and she's like, you want to see him, Ryan? I'd be like, yeah, I think you should see him. You got to check this out. They did a very good job. It's asymmetrical. It wouldn't bother me. Does that make me a shitty wife? No, I think that that just makes you a very woman very womanly okay because that's not how dudes look at them you're looking at that situation as a very non-sexual interaction and in so your you mind that's should... what it is but ryan is not looking at them to see if they're asymmetrical nor would i nor would any other dude he would be looking at them because they're a pair of boobies and that's what he likes to look at and it would be a very sexual way of looking at them because you don't look at boobs as a scientific thing as a guy you just don't okay sean um, so this dude, in closing, from a dude's perspective, this dude has the right to be mad because his friend was not looking at the piercings to see if the guy got him in the nipples perfectly. How do you know that, though? Maybe I know, because I know was. how dudes are. No, he wasn't. He was like, oh, I finally got to see your tits. Wanted to see him for a long time. Thank God she got him pierced because I might not have got to see him without it. You're insane. Okay, nope, if you have an opinion... Yeah, yeah. I post these uh, up on our social media pages. Just search across all platforms. Sadie and Sean have no friends and you can let us know what you think. Maybe I am like a horrible human being, but I'm like, yeah, give it a look. It's fine. No big deal. A boob's a boob. It's fine. Uh, but many people probably don't agree with that. So let us know what you think. You can leave us a comment. I love that people are leaving comments on YouTube. That blows my mind. So thank you for that. And uh, be sure to subscribe. And finally, let's say thank you to the amazing Casey's Pest Control Services. Uh, if you're having issues with pests, we have these worms and I know they're caterpillars, but they look like uncircumcised penises that are all over. And Sean, I can tell you're paying attention to this story and they are everywhere. And uh, so I'm giving him a call and he's going to come out and he's going to spray them. He's probably not going to spray them because they're probably going to turn into butterflies. Anyway, thanks for listening.